Hello everyone, my name is George Kunihiro. Today I'm standing in front of the Hillside West, a building designed by Fumihiko Maki, who is the chairman of the National Advisory Board for the UIA 2011 Tokyo World Congress of Architecture. Today we'll be talking with Mr. Maki to hear about his view about the city of Tokyo in the vision about the Design 2050, a theme for the upcoming World Congress of Architecture to be held in September 2011. Thank you very much for coming uh, during your busy schedule to uh, talk about Tokyo and our uh, UIA 2011 Tokyo World Congress of Architecture. Um, I'd like to ask you several questions about uh, Tokyo and the attractiveness of, uh, of our city. So uh, after living in, in the U.S. for many years and, and you have an international practice based in Tokyo, uh, First question is, I'd like to ask you what do you think is the charm or attraction of Tokyo? I think uh, the uniqueness of Tokyo uh, in uh, uh, physical uh, setup, uh, since I'm an architect, I'm going to talk about uh, physical uh, setup, uh, is I think uh, still Tokyo has a, a layer of uh, space and architecture uh, of uh, different times, but in a very fragmental way. That is a very, very unique uh, aspect of uh, Tokyo. In uh, all the European cities, as you know, the, uh, the buildings of the different time was put together pretty much orderly. Uh, yet, Tokyo is uh, quite different. There is a reason why. Because uh, Tokyo happened to be, or Edo happened to be uh, one of the largest cities uh, in the world already in the uh, 18th uh, century. And uh, you might be able to call uh, this city must have had a certain orders. However, uh, after uh, Meiji Restoration and uh, big earthquake 1922 and also air raids in uh, 1944 to 45 uh, changed the face of uh, Tokyo uh, quite uh, drastically, uh, which no other cities could have uh, experienced. But some of the old buildings, in spite of those, uh, pro, uh, uh, in spite of uh, these uh, uh, calamities, still remain. But again, as I mentioned to you, in a fairly uh, fragmental ways. But this uh, mixture of the building and the process, in a different time, in a chaotic. Uh, ways uh, give a certain charm uh, to uh, uh, a city of uh, this size, which you could not have too much in uh, other places. So this is my uh, basic observation on uh, physical uh, the, uh, characteristics of uh, Tokyo. As uh, as an architect, that's a very interesting uh, impression because. Uh, of course, charm and chaos uh, could be ironic or uh, contradictory, but uh, you find it the, uh, the feature of, uh, of uh, Tokyo, this whole uh, sort of seemingly contradictory uh, kind of uh, situation of 
charm and chaos kind of thing. Yeah. So the chaos could be a charm. Like yes, that. yes. And uh, I think it's unique in, uh, in Tokyo. Well, in this context, you have uh, built many buildings uh, in Tokyo, of course. Uh, you have done uh, buildings around the world. Uh, for you, uh, when you design your uh, projects in this context of Tokyo, what you call chaos, uh, how do you deal with it? Uh, what is your approach to uh, architecture design? Uh, I think, uh, just like uh, any uh, other architect uh, designing in Tokyo, we always face a completely uh, different sort of a context. But yet, I think uh, there is a way to uh, uh, respond to uh, the uh, particular unique context of uh, site surroundings and so on. And I, but at the same time, there must be a, a kind of a theme you have to uh, uh, set up uh, as an architect and see how this uh, uh, setup or proposition can uh, 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 work together with a unique context of uh, site shape of uh, properties and hybrid restrictions and client wheels and so on. And uh, uh, it, this kind of a situation also produces uh, the variety of uh, the building, particularly in uh, modern times. And uh, so uh, uh, as uh, I mentioned before, the, uh, uh, for the, some people, it's just simply uh, chaos. But yet, when you, you to understand the uh, a uh, way why those buildings are built. It uh, uh, gives you a certain uh, uh, interest, you know. Uh. Well, in, in that context, well, we're uh, sitting in the project that you have designed over uh, 25 years or 30 years, uh, this uh, hillside terrace. And in the context of this chaotic Tokyo, you've designed a very orderly, but yet uh, uh, interesting variety of buildings in different phases, and perhaps maybe you can uh, talk about your project yes. in uh, that context. The Hillside Terrace might be a good example. Uh, we started uh, the uh, first phase in 1969, and then over a uh, quarter century, we developed uh, the Hillside Terrace in uh, six uh, phases. And, uh, uh, but uh, for instance, uh, when you go into a site of uh, the third uh, phase, you could see a small uh, building uh, which must have existed since the sixth century. Now we have a small shrine over it. And also the owner of uh, this place uh, brought in a small uh, tea house uh, in the uh, compound. And furthermore, uh, they are all uh, sort of house built in the uh, 1920s are uh, now fortunately uh, appointed to be a uh, cultural important buildings and uh, cultural uh, uh, administration. So uh, within uh, this uh, very small sort of a compound, you are able to see the, uh, again, uh, uh, history of uh, Japanese uh, uh, cities and uh, built ones. Uh, and now uh, you might be able to call the uh, hillside terrace uh, compound itself is a product of uh, modernism in the uh, uh, 60s and uh, 70s. But when you go into uh, old Asakura estate I mentioned, uh, you can see uh, uh, old Japanese uh, house uh, in the early uh, 20th century and so on. So uh, I think this kind of uh, uh, complex, uh, complex may not be uh, quite uh, usual, but still you can find those uh, when you go into uh, other places in Tokyo. Well, uh, we're very fortunate to be here in this complex, and I think uh, for the visitors uh, of the UIA, uh, 2011 Tokyo Congress. They'll have an opportunity to, to also come uh, to this uh, uh, wonderful spaces. 
Uh, finally, uh, this event for UIA, your role as the chairman of the National Advisory Board of the Japan Organizing Board of the UIA World Congress in Tokyo, uh, I'd like a message from you to the, the world uh, and to the architects uh, who are uh, interested in coming to Tokyo to uh, participate in this uh, world event. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, Japan is uh, one of the uh, epicenter for uh, developing uh, new uh, architecture. And uh, there's a certain cultural background why uh, we could have maintained this uh, vigor. Uh, in uh, architectural practice and also products. And uh, perhaps a uh, UIA uh, meeting uh, next, 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 June, uh, next September, uh, uh, September mm -hmm. would be a good opportunity for uh, to uh, see how active uh, we are still in uh, spite of uh, economic uh, downturn. And so we, uh, we uh, right now, key committee members uh, working very hard to uh, uh, not only uh, have a just uh, the, uh, meeting of all the people from all over the world, but try to make uh, this uh, uh, UI Congress to be uh, uh, one of the most uh, memorable and meaningful uh, meetings where we are able to discuss the whole aspect of uh, architecture, as uh, indicated in uh, the title 2 or 50. So, uh, but yet uh, we try to also uh, give you opportunity to this uh, origin of uh, Japanese architectural culture uh, uh, as well. And uh, we uh, develop many uh, interesting uh, programs by those uh, key personnel. And we hope uh, many of you to come and enjoy the, uh, for uh, this uh, conference. Okay, well, thank you very much. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> thank you very much. This morning, we had an opportunity to chat with Mr. Fumiko Maki, the chairman of the National Advisory Board for the UIA World Congress in Tokyo, the 24th World Congress of Architecture. He talked about the attraction, the charm of Tokyo, the layers of Tokyo from the old to the new. In September, I hope you plan to be here in Tokyo to join the Congress to discuss about the issue Design 2050. Until then, so long.